What up, YouTube? It's your boy, True Hero. And today, we're bringing you another series, another video in the series, How to Beat. And this time, it's How to Beat Veyu or Bayou Turbo. Guys, I'm gonna be saying differently throughout the entire video, so please, don't get angry at me. But I have a special guest, the Veyu Turbo Master himself, who needs no introduction, but here he is, 10FD. Welcome. Who is that? No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up, guys? Yeah, so we've come together to explain to you how to beat Value Turbo. And before anything, what are your thoughts about the deck? Like, what made you even want to play it? Because you're actually the reason why people play it in modern Edison format. Because before you, it didn't really see that much attention. And then you popularized it with, you know, your immense tournament success so can you tell us a little bit about the deck and like why you chose to play it in the beginning uh yeah sure so when i started edison format i started okay so i just wanted like a retro format and i'm like oh look edison's popping up so i was like what's something i can play i recognize hero beat so started with hero beat i wanted to get a feel of the format and eventually like you can only get like so high of a win rate with uh hero beat and mm -hmm. I switched to TV Hero actually after a little bit, and Shout I kept losing the Black Wings. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I switched to TV Hero after Hero Beat, <laughs> and I kept losing the Black Wings, and I kept losing to uh, IU Turbo, and I was like, wait a second, I don't have enough side deck cards to like counter all their threats with uh, like Oppression DDV. So I was like, okay, I want to pick. I feel like Black Wing and Value Turbo are two of the best decks, and when I played Black Wing, I just hated the linear playstyle. You summon a guy, swing into it, and if they have some sort of trap, then you just eat a wall. If they don't, then you just... I, I, ju I just didn't like the linear playstyle, so I was like, okay, let's play with some value turbo. Practice with the deck, and, you know, kept refining it over several months, and yeah, here I am. Yeah, I mean, I definitely can see that, and I agree. Black Wings, even though I personally think they're the best deck of the format, they're a little boring they're very linear they're very linear mm -hmm. so at least with like value value turbo like you get a little bit of spice so for those yeah. of you who don't know the difference between like black wings and value turbo is like black wings they play the cards such as uh Quilute and shora icarus attack whereas value turbo doesn't really focus on those black wings or those trap cards the main point of value turbo is just as the namesake is to spam value values effect and bring out uh, level 6 and level 7 synchros and also they can bring out other synchros through the assistance of Plague Spreader Zombie and it's more of a control style deck because it plays one of the best three combination cards in Edison format which are Hamster Ryko Caius. So in addition to that and spamming synchros with Bayou's effect and stopping your opponent from special summoning with the use of Royal Oppression, it is the hands down number one best Royal Oppression deck in the format because with the exception of Dark Arm and Plague it doesn't hurt their deck at all. So this is pretty much the objective and the goal of Vite Turbo. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? Uh, sounds good. Yeah, no, like that's it. I mean, Vite Turbo is very self-explanatory. It has a great tournament history. It won nationals. It came in first place. It beat me, 2-0 creamed me. It wasn't even close. It wasn't competitive at all. So this is definitely a deck if you're considering playing you should know the ins and outs of it. And today we're going to teach you how to beat it. So without any further ado, we're going to get into how to side deck against Veyu Vayu Turbo. So up here we have the top row. Potential cards that you can side out from your deck against Vayu Turbo. And the bottom row, we have potential cards that you can side in against Vayu Turbo. So let's talk about the top row first. So we can see a special little card, Multiply. So obviously, right, everyone should be siding out Multiply from their deck, right? Yeah, yeah, I play like six Karibos, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So it's a troll, but not really. Multiply here is actually a symbol. It's a symbol for cards that you play multiple of. For example, let's say if you play like Double Book of Moon or like Triple Caius or even Triple Bora, right, or... If you're not playing Bayou Turbo and you're playing Black Wings and you play like Triple Bayou, right? Then Multiply represents those cards, the cards that you play multiple of. Generally, when you're side decking, if you're having a hard time to figure out what to take out, you can take out one of your multiples because the difference between two and three is actually not that much. So, of course, if you're playing a deck like Hero Beat and you're playing like Triple Alias, you should not side out any of your aliases because that card is so critical to the deck. So you just have to evaluate whether or not this card is crucial to your deck's game plan and 
If it's not, for example, in my Diva Hero deck, I play Triple Caius, right? Do I need Triple Caius? I don't need Triple Caius, right? So I usually tend to side out a Caius for another side deck card, especially because I have a feeling that the opponent might side into pulling the rug. But the point is, multiple multiply represents the cards that you are playing multiples of that you could potentially side out. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna move on to monsters, spells, and traps that you can additionally side out. And the first one we have up here is Battle Fader. So what are your thoughts of Battle Fader in the matchup? Uh, Battle Fader. So I've actually been playing a decent chunk of frogs lately, and when I play against Vayu Turbo, they have Oppression, DDV, but at the same time, it if you can stop like a 4K push, 5K push, it's like, it's pretty good. So, but you do have to, you, you do have to respect the, those two cards. So I would say you should probably side it out or side it down to one or zero. Yes. Like zero is probably safer, but you can keep one, but definitely no more than one. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And for your reasoning, exactly. The problem with Battle Fader is like, it loses to DDV games two and three, and it also loses to Royal Oppression. And it's like, yeah, you'll have this like Battle Fader, but like, if you don't get to use the effect, what was the point? So yes, it's critical in stopping the 4K push, but like against Value Turbo, that's already at least four cards you have to worry about, right? Because they're gonna have double oppression and they're gonna, if you're playing frogs, they're more than likely gonna side in at least two DDVs. So definitely keep that in mind. And next up we have Hamtaro, Hamster. Now actually, we have some different opinions about Hamster. So I'm gonna let you take the spotlight first. Oh, uh, okay. So we we're discussing Hamster, and he said that uh, you know you're on the back foot with uh, like flip effects, and I was saying that it's uh, it's actually not that bad because you have Hamster's 1800 defense. It walls Greffer, it walls Arma, Bayou swings Plague, and if they summon a Card Trooper, they can. Yeah, Card Trooper. It tanks a hit from Card Trooper. It can tank a hit from uh, Armed Wing. So I feel like it's not that bad. It's worse off if like uh, yeah, I guess if it's eating Caius or like a Ryko effect, then it's bad in those spots, which you know will pop up, but. You know, I, I like to keep one hamster in, even going second versus Vayu Turbo. Going first, I keep in both. Now, 10FD is definitely the master of the deck, so definitely take his opinion over mine. But my thoughts are, when it comes to hamster, if you're playing multiple of them, definitely at least side one of them out. But the reason why I would consider siding both of them out is because you would rather have the card in your deck that hamster gets, such as Ryko. The problem with hamster is, if you're going second, you draw it, and you set it, and then if they went first, they've already set their car, so they're gonna flip up their Ryko, their hamster, and then their Ryko will pop your hamster. Or like, their hamster will get a Ryko and they'll like tribute their hamster for like, a Caius, or even they can like, you know, do anything. So the point is like, it's a little bit slow temple, but one thing that 10 foot brought to my attention that like I agree with is like, when you're going second, you're always gonna be behind temple. So anyway, just thoughts to consider. So if you have other cards on this list that you can side out instead, they would take priority over Hamster. So that's it for the monsters. On to the potential spells that you can side out. And first up, we have Book of Moon. Now, I think this card is obvious why it should be sided out. But in case it isn't, let me just explain. First of all, Book of Moon is not good against a deck that has a lot of flip effect monsters. And against Vayu Turbo, you're going to be flipping down their Hamsters and their Rikos. But let's say you don't even book them. Let's say you book their Armageddon Knight. Well, Armageddon Knight's effect triggers when he is summoned. So if they flip summon him, Armageddon Knight triggers again. But let's say you don't use it against that either. Well, you want to use it against a push. They're swinging with like their Armor Masters or their Arm Wings or even in rare cases, their Silver Winds. Well, this is a ruling you might not know. But when you book a Synchro that is brought out from Veyu's effect, that Synchro will regain its effect when flip face up. So let's say they go like Armor Master attack and you want to protect your life points. You go Book of Moon, you book the Armor Master. Then on their turn, when they flip up that Armor Master, now it becomes a real Armor Master. Or even if like you book it and for some reason you attack into it because you think you can beat over it. Well, now when it flip face up, that Armor Master has its effect. So Book of Moon is not the best choice against Value Turbo. There are definitely better options, but of course, Let's hear what the man himself has to say. Uh, Book of Moon. So I personally am not the biggest fan of Book of Moon. Like I used to have one copy and I noticed I was just signing out in almost every matchup. And I was like, if I'm just signing this out every time, why don't I just cut it? I cut it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't really miss it. I feel like if you're playing a deck that, okay, so decks that need Book of Moon would be like Glad Beast and then 
other decks that can plus one off of it, like Black Wings. So if you flip something face down, sure, it gets a plus one. So it's Book of Moon is essentially like a pseudo plus one. If you not playing a deck that can do something like that, like Glad based or Shura, then I feel like that, yeah, you probably don't need it. Like it's it's mid. Like it's okay. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's like pretty mid. So if you have something better, definitely side it out. Yeah. Yeah. And next up, we have Gold Sark. Now I'm a big fan of Gold Sark. Every single Diva Hero list, literally all of them that I've topped with, I've main deck double Gold Sark. But the problem with Gold Sark is it can be too slow. And of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! game states, they always change. Like sometimes like Vayu Value Turbo can open up like really good. Sometimes they might brick a bit. But it's just like, I feel like if you're playing two, you can definitely take out one if you're going second, especially because you can just die. There have been games where I've played against like Vayu Turbo and it's like, I'm like, oh, he's not going to kill me. And next thing you know, I'm dead. Or even I'll go first. And this is the scariest part. I'll go first. Like, I'll win the RPS. And, like, I'll go, like, Gold Sark. And then I'll die before two turns are over. And it's like, I never even got a chance to get my card. So it's like, you kind of got to rely on the fact that you can survive two turns. Because the deck is very aggro and can easily pump out, like, synchros. And if you don't get those two turns, then it's just like, you just win neg one for no reason. So we can move on to the next one. Now, Mind Control. This is actually something that you need to keep in mind like i said this list here is just a general guide if you're playing the mirror match do not side out mind control do not side out mind control the card is busted in the mirror match and maybe 10 10 fd do you want to tell us why mind control is so broken in the mirror match uh not just the mirror match i feel like if you have it anywhere you should be putting it in because like you still a raiko it's just like i i get so sad when people steal my raiko kill my prison and then like synchro summon it away but i feel like it's Best okay. If you have your own Rikos, definitely don't side it out. But uh, what was it? I I'm like iffy on it in the mirror match because mind control. Uh, what was it? You don't have you don't have like infinite tuners. Like you're not always gonna have a tuner. You only play like Gale Plague usually, so uh, you don't get like the same value as a deck like Zombies or like some other synchro heavy deck. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah uh, don't. No, uh, I agree. It? So I actually personally don't bring it in the mirror. But if you have a what do you call? It? If you have tuners, definitely keep this in. Like never side this out. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Right. So if you have tuners, it can be good to keep in. But that's the thing, right? Is if you have tune or if your deck also plays like Rikos. Like me personally, the reason why I have it here on a potential card to side out is because their boss monsters, which are their synchros, you can't do anything with them, right? So generally, against decks that have boss monsters that you can't really do much with mind control i tend to like side it out now there are some decks that have boss monsters that like you can do things with like for example you can like mind control like an absolute zero and like miracle fusion it away right like that's a potential play but again yeah, yeah, i can do that too yeah but against like by turbo like it's really good if you can hit like a hamster or a raiko but other than hitting hamster and raiko and once again, if you're not playing tuners, this is if you're not playing tuners, other than taking a hamster and a rhino, uh, Raiko, it doesn't serve much of a purpose. Like, if you're playing a dark heavy deck, then potentially you can like mind control like a Greffer and like activate its effect. So it becomes really situational, right? So once again, mind control kind of falls into the same realm as hamster, where it's like, it shouldn't be your first priority to side it out. And it really just depends on your deck. And that's why you always have to know like, side decking is a skill like hopefully through like this video series like kaiba talks like how to beat like we can learn like how to side deck together like we like the viewers like me and you however if you only are going off of what you see that's not the best way to learn like you have to listen to what we're saying the information that we give and play like that's the best way to learn it's just like just play anyway that wraps it up for the the monsters and the spells so on to the last portion the traps that you should potentially side out right you could potentially side out and first up we have royal oppression so thoughts uh you should be signing this out uh yeah just always side it out <laughs> funnily enough there used to be a uh, high profile blackman player and you know i was famous for playing starlights and i noticed that he would cite this he, he wouldn't cite it out he'd either cite it in or he wouldn't cite it out versus me expecting it to starlight and i was thinking okay so you have to Okay, so first of all, I have to draw Starlight, you have to draw a Mass Deception Effect, and then you have to draw Royal Oppression for that to work. And I was thinking, yeah, that's that's some convoluted ass, uh, yeah, yeah, just don't do it. Just side it out every time. Unless it has more value if the 
if you're playing versus like a Chaos Sorcerer Return from the Different Dimension deck, but like versus my list with Spirit Reaper and, you know, not none of those like high roll Saki cards, you should always be signing it out. Yeah, and I agree completely. As I said in the intro, uh, Bayou Turbo is the best Royal Oppression deck in the format. It's the best one. And because it's the best Royal Oppression deck in the format, do you really think you're going to out Oppression in an Oppression deck? Like, technically, you can Royal Oppression by his effect, but like, they'll just do it again because banishing isn't a cost. So, always side it out. I don't think there's much to say about that. Let's move yeah. on to Solemn Judgment. Okay? Now, once again, it really depends on the deck that you're playing. Because in the mirror match, Solemn Judgment actually holds weight. Like, it can be quite good. But if you're not playing the mirror match, then I don't think that this card is good at all against Value Turbo. Because you Solemn, you go down to 4,000 or, or less, or less, and then you just lose. Because even their most basic play, right, which is Greffer, Pitch, Value, or Sirocco, make Armwing. That's 4K right there. Their most basic play. So it's like, it's not hard for them to do 4,000 or more points of damage. And that's just with two cards. And like, forbid they have something like Burial or Brain Control or like Heavy Storm to clear your back rows. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy for this deck to pump out damage. So I personally would not keep in Solemn Judgment, but you know, I mean, what, what, what do you say about Solemn Judgment? I think it depends on the deck. I was like trying to like put. It, I'm thinking, okay, so you're a high profile picture or high profile player, and I'm like, wait, you ne you cited out every time. That doesn't. Oh, I play maxed out defense drops. I have three prison. You have zero prison, so it would make make sense that you would want to cite out solemn judgment. Whereas I'm like, no, I always keep solemn judgment. So I would say that it depends on the amount of drops you have. If you have a lot of defense, like maxed out prisons, like necro gardener, gores, that sort of thing, then yeah, you should probably leave it in honestly because you can stop a plague synchro. So that's that's going to get you a plus one versus a plague synchro it can stop it can help you you know go through go for a big push it can stop caius but if you don't have a lot of defensive traps to support the solemn judgment yeah i actually agree with you after thinking about what your list looks like you should yeah. be signing it out right and that's why i'm happy we can come together because i also agree with what you said it really just depends on your deck if your deck is defensive why side out solemn judgment because you can protect yourself whereas my list generally as it's kind of infamously known I don't really play that much. Kidding. Yeah, I don't play that much defensive trap. It's just like, if my board's open, you can just attack, right? Most of the time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's solemn judgment. And now we have Starlight, Star Bright. Okay, this card is an interesting card, but one of the reasons why I don't think it's good is because it goes back to how Value Turbo is the best oppression deck of the format. If you're unaware, you can actually Royal Oppression the effect of Starlight Road. And when you Royal Oppression in Starlight Road, then it will be negated. You don't Special Summon Stardust, and the destruction will still go through, right? And that's actually what uh, Tenfoot was explaining earlier about when he was going against the high-profile Blackwing player. So because of that, that's one reason why I don't think Starlight Road is good. But also, generally, what mass destruction card are you going to run against? Other than, like, the staples, right? Mirror Force, Torrential, Heavy. Other than those, like, it's not like uh value turbo is really going to be destroying two or more of, of your cards at once they don't play acres attack right you don't have to worry about that so it's like they're just going to beat you down with their big monsters so it's like you have this starlight road and you're hoping for a miracle to happen and then like the miracle happens and then they flip up oppression or they flip up solemn or like the miracle just never comes so i don't think that this card is good at all against value turbo yeah, you should probably be signing it out, but Starlight Road is, like, funny in itself because sometimes... Okay, so I bring it in versus Blackwings, but sometime, or one time in a tournament, I played versus this Blackwing player, and he 2 owes me in Swiss, and I'm looking at the replay, and I notice that in, like, 15, 16 draws, he didn't draw any Icarus attack, no Heavy Storm, no Mirror Force, and I was like, what are the odds of that? And I calculated at the time, it was, like, 95% chance. And so I was like, wait, this guy's signing out all his mass destruction. So when I played him again in Top Cut... I had Starlight Road for Blackwing. I didn't bring in any Starlight Road. I just left my board completely as is, as is. He did the exact same thing, and I was able to beat him just because of lack of Starlight Road. So it's definitely not good versus value, but you should always be, like, citing in Starlight Road, citing out Starlight Road, and you should be, like... If they see it in game one, then they're always going to be thinking about it, or a good player's going to be thinking about it in yes. the back of their head. So you can even cite it out versus the decks that you would bring it in, like Blackwings. So Actually, that's a really that's a really good point, right? So against the mirror match is really... Uh, not mirror match... If you're playing with Bayou Turbo and you're up against Blackwings, it's really good. But me and 10FD, we don't get a chance to play in tournament often, right? Because of just 
that's just the bracket kind of luck that happens, right? Or unfortunate luck, whatever you want to call it. But the last time that I did play you in tournament, it was game two. So I won game one and then we played game two. And in game two, you had set like three or four or something like that. You had a lot of back row set. So I had Heavy yeah, Storm yeah. in my hand, but I didn't play it because I was afraid of Starlight Road, you know? So sometimes just the fear of a card is strong enough. Even if like you side it out, but like, you know, it was explained, if you saw it before or if you keep it in mind, like, ah, this is a deck that usually keeps Starlight Road in, then like that can be your Starlight Road. Not having your Starlight Road becomes your Starlight Road. And I didn't play Heavy Storm. And then like later I wound up watching. Well, that game came to an end and later I watched the replay and you didn't have anything. You didn't have Solemn. Yeah. You didn't have Road. You didn't have anything. I could have just freely played the, the Heavy Storm. And that game I actually wound up losing because I didn't play Heavy Storm. Yeah, it was Mirror Force. Funnily enough, uh, what was it? Versus Blackwing players, I'll do I'll do that. I'll set five. No protect. Like, they'll see two Starlights in game two. Game three, I'll side out all my Starlights. Set five. They'll be like, ah, oh, shit. I don't know what to do. And, you know, it's so much worse to have them play around Starlight Road and have your traps be real. And in a War League match, I would... So Crow's Nest, uh, Dimitri, him and I would play a lot. And he'd always, like, see me. You know, sometimes I'd set five, no protection. And he ended up going for a Black Rose Dragon when I had, like, two monsters, three back rows. And because I would condition him to be thinking, oh, not all of the time I'm going to be having Solemn or Starlight. I ended up having Solemn that time, and I ended up winning because of, you know, the conditioning that I did with, uh, you know, just over... It's yes. overextending, but it's like, yes. you have to... If you always play with protection, then you, you become easily readable. So you have to take risks. And, yes. yeah. I so. do agree. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a big game of, like, taking risk and also just... It's, it's mind games, you know what I mean? It's mind games. So yeah. let's move on to the last one. Trap dust shoot this is the card everybody hates i definitely think first turn you never want to see this if it's up against you right you never want to see this more than any other card maybe this or future fusion it's hard to say which is worse right would you rather your opponent have first turn future fusion or first turn dust shoot right it's really hard to say but um what are your thoughts about this uh trap dust shoot i think it's you should always keep it if you're going first going second if you're going versus like a trap heavy build with like 12 13 traps you should be signing it out versus some monster heavy decks or some monster heavy versions with like chaos sorcerer necro guard uh, charge of the light brigade they're gonna have a uh, bigger hand size oh elfin is another one if they play like elfin yeah i feel like you should keep it in first or second because they're always gonna have large hand size but yeah that's my opinion on if you should keep it in or not it depends on the variant right and that's the thing too is like we can't make videos for each specific version of value turbo like how to beat chaos value turbo with chaos sorcerer or how to beat like value turbo with necro gardener or how to make beat value turbo with spirit reaper right like this it's impossible so you really have to learn how to read your opponent's deck that's why game one is the most important game it's the most important game because you get knowledge of the type of deck that your opponent is playing against and then using rather and then based off of what you saw game one you can make the appropriate side decisions for games two and three. And games two and three are also important because remember, you play more sided games, more games two and three, than you do game ones. It is a fact. So you have to really pay attention game one, and even game two, if it gets to that point, right, um, where you have an opportunity to go to game three, of what cards are in your opponent's deck, that way you can make the appropriate side decisions as to what cards to take, uh, put in, and what cards to take out. So that wraps up that. So on to the second segment of this side deck and portion, which are potential cards to side in. And first up, we have the Birdman himself, Sirocco. So Sirocco, you might be wondering, well, why is this card to get good against Vayu Turbo? It's because of his effect. He actually gains the attack of Blackwing monsters on the entire field. So not just your side of the field, but your opponent's side of the field as well. So if they have a armor master, arm wing, etc., you can just go summon Sirocco, pump, attack, run over. And just like that, he's a one card out to a lot of different situations. But you need to keep in mind when you use this effect, it says right here, right? Other monsters you can control cannot attack. So he's only good for one attack. And if you're not playing like Black Wing specifically, that means that it's going to be kind of hard to... Uh, for your other monsters to coordinate well with Sirocco. So just keep that in mind. Like, yes, he can be good in terms of putting a lot of damage from one attack, but then 
that's it. That's your battle phase. Anything else you want to add? Uh, let's see. Sroko. I feel like it's better in decks like Hero Beat, especially. Like Hero Beat is the first thing that comes to mind because you know they have like Honest and those. You know the damage actually adds up. I was actually putting Magic Cylinder into Hero Beat, funnily enough, and yep. you got me thinking of a uh, Black Wings Value Turbo. This card is amazing versus Black Wings, and I remember you're talking about Solemn Judgment. You should always be siding out Solemn Judgment in uh, Black Wing Mirrors because of this card. And you know Soroka goes up to like 25 gazillion yep. d- uh, damage in Black Wing Mirrors, but and versus Value, I think it's it's okay. It's not good. It's not bad, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. If you have better, if you have bad cards, you definitely uh, bring these in. And this is actually the thing that I want to mention, that especially now since we're talking about potential cards to side in. Bayou Turbo is such a well-built deck. It's one of the cleanest engines in Edison format, to the point where there is no one side deck card that completely shuts the deck down, because most of the deck can out whatever side card you build in or throw in with the help of their Rikos, right? The fact that they play Rikos is so critical because if you side in like any of these continuous spells and traps, then they're just going to get sent to the graveyard. So it's really hard to side in like a one card floodgate against uh Bayou Turbo. Whereas Black Wings, you can potentially bring out uh Consecrated Light. And actually that brings us to the next next monster, and it completely shuts down Black Wings because all of their monsters are dark. All of them right but by turbo they have options where it's like worse comes to worse they can like normal summon their hamster or normal summon their Ryko or in best case scenario normal summon their car trooper and run over this consecrated now the reason why i actually have consecrated here is because you might be thinking well then that's already three different cars that you name that can out consecrated light well you need to think about how that functions if your opponent normal summons any of the three aforementioned cards to run over consecrated light Yes, it's unfortunate you lose your Consecrated Light, but more importantly, they lost their battle phase, right? So if you summon Consecrated Light at the right time, they're not going to have any of these guys on the field, right? They're not going to have their Vayus or their Sorokos, right? They're going to be in the grave because they didn't have an opportunity to banish them yet. So if you summon this and they summon their card to beat over it, then, well, you saved yourself another turn. And if a side deck card gives you another turn, then it's done its purpose, right? You, the whole point of side decking is to put yourself in the best position to win. But I'm curious, what do you have to say about Consecrated? I think Consecrated is ass versus fine. <laughs> 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 I think it's God card. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, especially with my build, because, okay, so I have three Rikos, two hamsters. The um, Okay, so Ryko, you flip summon. Like, Ryko almost is always a one for one. Like, you flip summon an attack position Ryko, and I, I'm never getting value out of that. Versus Consecrated Light, I can flip a Ryko and then like get a plus one killing a Consecrated Light. I've had so many people side in Consecrated Light versus me, and it's like I have Car Trooper, like Hamster, like they Hamster, like I said, Hamster tanks a hit. I have a Ryko, flip some to Ryko, I get a plus plus two off Ryko. So I would not recommend siding this against Value Turbo. And also I have or what was it? Dex that side this in? Uh let's see. Which there there was a I remember it was a Machina lit. Machinas that cited it in a uh, Consecrated Light versus me, and I personally cited Thunder King Ryo or Machina. Normal summons this, I punch him for 1900 oh and he my. can't even drop cores because his life is too low after oh that. Oh my. So, That's uh... Yeah, so definitely be mindful of uh, what they're putting in their side deck. Like, if they're citing, like, another card is a Fossil Dino. Like, yes. if I'm citing in Fossil Dino versus your deck, then, you know, that's another out to uh, Consecrated Light, but. That's true. Yeah, I. I can't recommend it. I would not recommend uh, citing in Consecrated Life versus yeah. this. <laughs> so, the th- and I agree with all the points that he said because, I mean, they're true. But the thing is, yeah. it's like, in my case, one reason why I would consider citing in Consecrated Light is because generally, just like he said, the outs, with the exception of like uh, Fossil Dyna, are cars that you set. You set Hamster, you set Ryko, you set whatever out you have, and then you flip it up and you get your plus and destroy the Consecrated Light, right? Once again, with the exception of False Diana. And that's what I want. I want my opponent to set their monsters because I play Triple Caius. You set your Ryko because you want to get a plus, I summon Caius. And I contribute the Consecrated for Caius. Or I can even go Deck Devastation Virus, right? Or I can even go Noble Mana Cross Out, right? So Noble Mana Cross Out is, of course, the best example. So you'll set your Ryko trying to get a plus because it wouldn't make sense to summon the Ryko and attack over the Consecrated. Then I'll play Noble Mana Cross out. Now all your Rikos are gone. So, of course, that's the thing. It's, it's situational because 
he has so he being the opponent whoever is playing by turbo or she right it's 2023 has so many different outs to consecrated light so it's not once again the best card but it's something that you can keep in the back of your mind but anyway we'll move on to the next dd crow yeah. if you can protect it okay dd crow so dd crow uh, yeah you can start it off oh oh, oh no, no. <laughs> no no go ahead go ahead take the floor the floor is yours Oh, oh, okay, okay, I'll take the floor. Uh, let's see, DD Crow, it, it's mid. It's not bad, it's not good. Uh, let's see. I'd rather have uh, another card that you have listed I, that I really like. But DD Crow, if you hit it on a value piece, one Greffer activation or one Armageddon activation, and you're just minus one, yep. it can delay. And also a Burial. Like, Burial will completely nullify your Crow. Uh, yeah, I think it's mid. If you don't have, like, if you have worse cards than Crow, like, definitely bring them in. But for the most part, I think Crow is, like, it's like white bread. Like, you're not excited to eat it, but you eat it if you're hungry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't add anything to that because I agree 100%. Against the matchup, I side it, but that's only because when you are building a side deck, your side deck has to be versatile to cover, cover a plethora of different matchups. And it's like, whereas DD Crow isn't specifically for Vayu Turbo, I can also use it against other decks. So it just so happens to be a card in my side deck that I can side, where it's not like the number one side card against the matchup, but I throw it in because it's a card I can side that's in my side deck. So it's in there for versatility's sake, but I do agree overall it's it's pretty mid. So we'll move on to the next. Kaiko. I like that. Now, Kaiko, a, a lot of people say he's just an 1800 vanilla monster. So they say he doesn't do anything. And the theory behind why they make fun of Kaiko, and I think Kaiko gets a lot of bad rap. I don't think he's as bad as everyone says he is. But they say it's just like, he's only good when you're winning. Because like, if you pull Kaiko when you're not winning, like he's not helpful. And sidecars, generally, you want to pull them when you're winning or losing that they can have some kind of like, uh, you know, assistance to you. And inflicting battle damage is very difficult, right? But even his other effect, in my opinion, is quite good because your opponent is not allowed to banish cards from the graveyard. So they can't even attempt to activate Bayou's effect if you just summon him. So I think the card is quite good, but I do understand he gets a lot of bad rep. He gets made fun of all the time. So what what do you think about him? I think that it's a risky pick to bring versus value. If it's like a list with like Elf, or there was like a one of the, one of the list top was like Raikeki Breaks and very few traps. If you can get a clean hidden, like, yeah, this card is good. But the problem with Kaiku is that they're not always going to have a graveyard, and ham the double hamster is becoming very popular, and ha Kaiku cannot run over hamster. So True. we're going to have to wait a lot of turns to be able to summon it, and when you do summon it, it's not always going to get a guaranteed, uh, you know, banish too. So I think it's I think it's high risk, high reward, in my opinion. I personally don't bring it in for Vayu, but I would always bring this in versus Frogs. If you can kill two Treeborns, like, wow, this card just won you the game, but yep. Vayu, there's a lot more stuff you have to uh, worry about yeah. than uh, bringing in Kaiku. I'm not going to speak any more ill of Kaiku. I'm going to move on. Neil Spation <laughs> Grand Mole. Now, I personally hate this card. It's a great card. Don't get me wrong. I hate when it's used against me, for clarity's sake, because I'm the Diva Hero guy, and Grand Mole is one of the few cards that can out zero without any repercussion. But how is Grand Mole against Vayu Turbo? Uh, it's very obnoxious. When Hero Beat players bring this in, like Hero Beat without this, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is free. But when I see that, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Like you have to always prison or mirror force that, or even sell them. I've had to sell them this multiple times because I'll have like two arm rings on the field. I'm like, this thing's gonna, you know, get like plus five, plus six. And it's like, oh wow. So. It interrupts your flips. It kills Armwing. Like, this is... If you have it, you should definitely be bringing it in. I think it's a great card. We're brothers. Then we're brothers in that sense, where we both hate this card. Yeah, I mean, it stops <laughs> It stops pretty much, like you said, almost the whole deck, right? Like, every Synchro, it sends them back. And, like, it's not going to be easy for Vayu Turbo to bring back Synchros unless they have Burial. It stops all the flip effect monsters. Like, it's just it's just so good. The only drawback with Grand Mole is the fact that you have to normal summon it. That's the only drawback. If you're playing a deck that can special summon a lot, like Diva Hero or anything, then a special summon monster plus Grand Mole is like a bread and butter. The old classic combo that I used to play back in the day when like 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! before, I was quite good at Edison, but the old classic combo was Cyber Dragon Grand Mole. Love that combo. Just keep him in for 21. Dirty. Yeah, dirty, dirty. All right. 
Another dirty card, Vanity's Fiend. Now, Vanity's Fiend is quite good, but also, like I said, the problem against Vi Turbo is like they can out almost anything that you side against them because it's such a well built deck. Like, yes, Vanity's Fiend stops them from special summoning, but like they have triple Raikou. Like, Vanity Fiend's attack a face down, you think it's like a hamster, and then it's Raikou, and then like, okay, Vanity's gone. So, yes, he's good if you bring him out at the right situation because he can guarantee that you get damage on the board. He can stop Greffer from special summoning. He can stop a dad from dropping. He can stop Plague. He does stop a good portion of the deck. However, for me, it comes down to one of two decisions. Would I rather have a Vanity's Fiend or would I rather have a Caius, right? And there's arguments for both, right? Because Caius, you know, he's going to get rid of the problem, right? And Caius can get rid of Armor Master, but Vanity's Fiend can't, right? If you draw him after the fact. And... Caius can also get rid of face down monsters such as Raikou and Hamsters, but Vanity's Fiend can't. So it's like, it's really kind of like up in the air whether or not you should side this card, but he should at least be mentioned because he does stop a good portion of the deck. Yeah, I think Vanity's is a little bit too risky with all of the outs that they have to it. So three Raikou, two Bottomless, three Prison, Mirror Force, Torrential, and then what else is there? Brain Control. So there's a lot of ways that Value Turbo can deal with it. Caius is just uh Caius is a lot safer out, in my opinion. Yep. I I agree. I agree. So that wraps up the monsters and on to the spells. Now this spell here, this here, it's like it's kind of like a troll, but not really. The problem with Defissure isn't Defissure itself. Defissure actually hits every single meta deck in the top five, right? So when you think about the top five decks, or top four, because the top four are established, the fifth deck is debatable. But the top four decks are Value Turbo, Black Wings, Hero Beat, and Diva Hero Beat. Those are the top four, without a doubt. The fifth one, you can argue, you can say Zombies, you can say Diva Hero, you can say whatever you want, right? But the top four are cemented as of now. And D Fisher stops all four of the top decks. But the problem is, what deck are you playing where D Fisher doesn't hurt you? You know what I'm saying? And also, it goes back to Raikou again. Raikou can still activate his effect if you have Defissure. So Raikou would just pop the Defissure and that's it. Uh, what are my thoughts? So the main deck that plays this is Gladiator Beast. Yes. And when I see it, I'm thinking, eh, like it's it's okay. Like it'll uh, it'll stop some monsters for a little bit, but at the same time, Defissure by itself is not doing anything. Yes. So sometimes I'll have matches where, you know, I play three dust, three Raikou, so I'll whittle away at the back rows and I'll I'll just leave the defisher up and I'll beat them down with like a catastrophe. <laughs> and there was like, I had a, I had a what was it? An, it was a time wizard pod. Guy plays glad beasts and both matches or both of the games that I won. And two, I just run him down with a thunder king. Just like whittle down and leave the defisher. He draws into a second one, loses the game, and then the next game three, I did the exact same thing except with the catastrophe. And I just ran him down with that while he has his defishers up. So I think it's a risky card, maybe one or two if you can play it but definitely not three if you break on that you're just yep. you're just done <laughs> that's right it's like how many times do we got to teach you the same old lesson old man like mm -hmm. yeah all right now this is one of the better cards against uh value turbo one of the best actually but of course it's situational still despite how great it is it's situational and the reason why it's situational is because you want to see it like early game right when you think about the early game of value turbo generally their game plan is either summon Greffer or Armin Gutta Knight in pitching or setting a monster, right? So early game is quite good. But mid game, it's less frequent that they set monsters. And late game, they already have their established board. So if you pull this early game and they're setting their hamsters or their Raikos, it's really good. Especially if you hit a Raiko, because as you can kind of see from what we've explained about so far, a lot of the outs that Value Turbo has against cards you side in against them is actually Raiko, right? That's actually one of the big cards that they use to out a lot of different cards. So if you go Nobleman, you hit the Raiko and you get all the Raikos, well then that's gonna make the matchup so much more easier. But what do you think? What are my thoughts on Nobleman? I'd say, I'd say it's an okay card. If you draw it late game, it's a liability. And like you know, Value Turbo is very versatile. 
there are matches where I won't draw Raikou or Hamster in like the first 15, 16 cards, and then my opponents, you know, they'll be chilling with two noblemen and like, oh, what do I do with these? So I think it's a risky card to bring in, and if you get it off, it's one for one. It's not like you kill the Raikos and it's just like, oh no, my deck collapses on itself. Yep. I think that, yeah, I think if you're playing, I think if your deck is weak to Raikou, you should be signing them like Hero Beat. If you lose your Gemini Spark or your Hero Blast to a Raikou, like, you are in big trouble because your monsters are just, like, they're literally 1900 vanilla. It's like, you need those cards to uh, even out the game state. So I feel like Hero Beat has to play Land of Cross out. But if you can, if you're not, like, that weak to Raikou, then I feel like that you could probably uh, look at a different card on this list. One of them is uh, I like the most. Yeah, I know. We're getting to the traps. We're getting there. So mm -hmm. the last spell, the last spell, Prohibition. Now, this card, it started off actually as, like, a joke card. And people always made fun of Prohibition, just like they made fun of our boy Kaiko. But the difference is, recently, more people have begun to side deck this card. And against Bayou Turbo, one of the cards that you would potentially call would be Bayou himself, right? Bayou the Emblem of Honor. Because then, Bayou doesn't do anything anymore, right? And that's not the only card that you can call, right? So Prohibition can be quite flexible in the way that you use it because you can also use it, uh, for example, if you're going for um, a play that revolves around a lot of special summons, right? You can call Royal Oppression, right? But then, once again, it says that cards that are already on the field are not affected. So I guess even in that instance, they could just chain Oppression. So it's like, it's weird. It's weird. But anyway, against Vayu Turbo, definitely calling Vayu is like a really good choice. But what do you think? I have had Prohibition brought against me one time. And the guy opens it and he's just like, hmm, I don't know what to call. He calls Caius and I top deck Caius and I ended up losing because of that. That was the one experience I had wow. with Prohibition. But in theory, that sounds, it, I don't know. It's, a, it's an interesting card, honestly, because yeah. it can, I feel like you definitely can't slam it. You have to like wait until, you know, you whittle down and have a good read on what they have. Or if they, you know, set up a grave and they're waiting to, uh, you know, blow up on you, then you can, you know, slam it down and call value. But yeah. it's an interesting pick. I'd have to uh, play against it more to see, to right. get a, like a complete opinion. Right. I mean, I'll say this, the last thing about Prohibition, I was playing against like DB Rando and he has a Stratos on the board and I have like Mirror Force set, right? And my life points are at like, I don't know, 400. They're like quite low. So he just goes Prohibition and he calls Mirror Force and he attacks and I have Mirror Force set. And I was like, yep, yep, I guess. I was, you know... I didn't get too upset because like it's Yu-Gi-Oh, but I'm just like, there are so many other cards it could have been. It could have been Book of Moon, it could have been D-Prison, it could have been anything, because he only had one monster on the board as well. But like Prohibition, like, you know, if you call right, it's similar to Mind Crush, right? Like Mind Crush, if you call right, you are gonna be in a really good position. So same with Prohibition, but I guess it's a card like, you know, was explained, it needs a little bit more testing, but one of the cards I would call, cause calling Caius, like it depends on the situation. Like obviously if your board is set up in a point where you lose to Caius, like that's a good call. But I think in in general, it would probably be better to call like Bayou. Uh, you said that you had a Mirror Force set and then the guy calls Mirror Force with Prohibition, right? Yeah. If it's already set on the field, you can still activate it. Is that Prohibition stops is if you draw Mirror Force, you cannot set Mirror Force. Is that how that works? Yeah, and oh. at Nationals, it was made even worse. Uh, somebody cited in Prohibition, and the situation was he activates Prohibition and calls a monster in the graveyard. And the guy flips Call of the Haunted, or later on, the guy flips Call of the Haunted and targets the declared monster. And they call a head judge, and the head judge rules that Prohibition only applies to cards in the hand, which is what? absurd, honestly. Like, in if you play in an online event, they'll rule it as you can't activate the effects in the hand or in the grave or anywhere but if it's already on the field then you're you know it's free to use yeah. it however you wish actually I, like i see it here it says right here including face down cards but the problem is i wasn't sure because you know dueling book uses the most current errata of the uh card so i wasn't sure for edison format if this part applies as well but if it does then that kind of actually makes prohibition a little bit worse but it's good to know i'm gonna read up about that good to know definitely mm -hmm. good to know so now we're on to the traps, which are probably the better cards that you should generally side against Bayou Turbo. So first up, if you're not already main decking this, right? There are some decks that side bottomless, but if you're not already main decking this, you should definitely side bottomless because um, it stops their synchros. But it's not the perfect card because like, yes, you'll bottomless like their arm wing or their armor master, 
And if they have a value engraved, like they can't continue the line, like if you were to destroy it to make the next one up. Um, so that it's good in that sense, but it can be like, and I say this in air quotes, bad if they have burial, right? Because then they'll just burial and they'll bring it back. And then it's just like, oh, my bottomless didn't really do anything. So the bottomless overall, overall is really good against Vayu Turbo, but you know, thoughts? Um, I think it's a good card. Like, I main deck bottomless because of, you know, the prevalence of aggro decks. And yeah, yeah it's a great card. Personally, I, it, like, if you're playing frogs, you're probably going to be side decking this. You can side, you can replace Battle Fader, for instance, because, you know, bottomless isn't going to get hit by DDV. It's not going to get hit by, uh, what's the other one? Royal Oppression. So it, you know, it's not as good as Battle Fader, but, you know, it can stop damage. So uh, you should definitely be bringing this in if you have it. All right. And on to the next, Compulse. Now, this is a card that is really good. Because the thing about Value Turbo, just like we explained, is like, yes, there's a potential chance that you can banish the cards and they can bring them back with Burial. But when they go back to the extra deck, that's it. It's it's even worse. They would prefer to have their Synchros banished than sent back to the extra deck because they've already used their card. So Compulse is really good. You send back the Synchros and like, then they're gone. Out of sight, out of mind. Ejected into Oblivion. So I definitely think this is a card that you can consider siding against uh, Vayu Turbo. Um, what do you think? Uh, earlier in a Beast Mode interview, he asked me, hey, what do you side versus Vayu Turbo? Compulsory is, in my opinion, the best card that you can bring versus Vayu Turbo because of, you know, like you said, it kills the Armed Wing. You can use it defensively. Like, let's say they have Brain Control or some, like, Prison Bottomless. You can, you know, use it defensively and then go back on the offensive. Let's see. If you play Dark Arm Dragon, like so many times I'll have like Dark Arm Dragon Compulsory, summon Dad, no prio. They'll be like, okay, bottomless or torrential. Some guy torrential like his whole field. I compulse it back, resummon the dad. He's just like, oh, I lost. Yep. So easily the best card because it's stopped arm doing. You can top deck it after like for instance, DD Crow. If they summon the card and then draw Crow, Crow is just completely worthless. This card, if they summon Arm Doing, you can top deck it. You're like, oh sweet, I drew a live card. You can chain it, it's a fast effect. And another thing, uh Value Turbo makes uh Synchros with a plague, right? Right. You can completely wreck their whole, like, you, you can wreck their day if you hit it on their plague pieces. Like, one time I was in a Time Wizard pod, guy summons Sirocco, and he has a plague engrave. And I am I intentionally had, like, three monsters on the board, two back rows. And I'm like, I know he's going to go for black rows, because I had to read that he had likely Sirocco. But I had a compulsory set. So he summons Rocco, stacks for plague, compulsive plague. He's just like, I lost. Yeah. Like, the, Sirocco is just completely, like, dead in the water. He lost his plague, lost his normal summon for the turn. Like, so much down on tempo, you stack the card. It's like, this card is easily the best card versus Value Turbo, in my, you know, opinion of testing or playing against Value Turbo and playing, like, <laughs> like being on the receiving end of Compulsory, so. And also, for those of you who don't know, right, Plague, he says when he uh, leaves the field, he gets banished. So if you go, like, stack for Plague and then your opponent goes Compulsory on your Plague, it doesn't go to the hand. It gets banished. So... Mm -hmm. Compulse is really, really good against like plague when they sack the effect. So, because some people they might think, oh, like it'll go back to my hand. Like, no, that card is gone. It is banished. So, really, really good, strong card against Bayou Turbo. And we have, you know, the generic spell and trap destruction, which is Dust Tornado. Dust Tornado. I think this card kind of goes without saying. Like, if your deck is especially weak against Royal Oppression, it's really good. But not even just if your deck is weak against Royal Oppression. Generally, Bayou Turbo plays like a lot of good trap cards mirror force torrential deep prison uh royal oppression as i mentioned before and plus the additional cards that they side into like they could potentially side into pulling the rug if you're you know playing a deck that heavily relies on effects that activate upon summon so dust tornado is just like a good card because it gets rid of the problem cards and you can also use it in like a really creative way because people often forget about the second effect of Dust Tornado, which is you're allowed to set a spell or trap from your hand, right? So you could potentially use that to set up a like a nice cute play on your turn. But overall, more time than not, you're going to be using the first effect of Dust Tornado primarily, which is just the destruction effect. And it goes a long way. It really does go a long way. Even if you hit a card like Solemn, like it, that's a great Dust Tornado, you know? So great card easily takes out a lot of problematic cards in the matchup i don't really think there's much to really try to convince people of playing dust tornado yeah. like if you're not playing yeah. dust tornado though then like what are you doing how are you going to out the different spells and traps like me yeah. i don't side dust tornado but that's because i side a different card on this list that we're going to get to but for now we can get into imperial iron wall 
Oh, can I mention uh, something on Dust Oh, yeah, right? yeah, go ahead, go oh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you play Royal Oppression, or if you're weak to Royal Oppression, you absolutely need this for, you know, Bayou and Black Wings. And another, you know, thing that not everybody knows is that the second part of Dust Tornado can set one spell or trap that actually makes cards mistiming. So an example that I can think of is Gear Town. So Gear Town says if it's destroyed, you can uh, special summon a gear monster. But Dust Tornado, if you use that set effect, they can't summon the gear monster. So something to keep in mind. All right, you can continue. Oh, nice. That's actually a good piece of knowledge. Hoping you guys grow, all right? So we have Iron Wall. Now, Iron Wall kind of falls into the category of Defissure. It's funny because um, they have opposite effects, right? This card banishes everything. This card f prevents things from being banished. But same, the top decks generally cannot play this, right? Because you need your Miracle Fusions. Like I said, the top two decks are Miracle Fusion decks or Vayu Soroka decks. And both of those decks require you to banish cards. So if you're playing an S tier deck, you can't even side this. You know, like you can say, oh, but I'll special summon my guys first and then flip up Iron Wall. That's, that's not the way to go. That's definitely not the way to go. So it is a good card if your deck can support it. And off the top of my head, one deck that can definitely support it that you should watch out for is the Gemini deck, right? So the Gemini deck, they can easily side in Iron Wall and like they don't have to worry about anything. But yeah, it's good against Bayou Turbo because they rely on banishing their Bayous. If they don't banish their Bayous, then they can't summon their Arm Wings or their Armor Masters, etc. or Silver Winds in the rare cases. But as usual, going back to the top talk of the town, Raikou. Raikou can easily just out this guy. So it's like, they don't particularly like lose. If you flip Iron Wall, it's not like the Bayou Turbo player is going to be like, oh no, I lost because Iron Wall is up on the field. Like, no, it's not going to be like that, right? However, however, it can stall for maybe one or two turns and that might be what you need to kind of like excel and help out in the matchup. But I'm curious what you have to say. Uh, earlier you were talking about Consecrated saying that it's like good because it can solve for one or two turns. I yes. think that this is a much better example of like a good card. Like it, it's not guaranteed to stick because yeah, I play Dust, I play Raikou, but that card is very disruptive. It, if it stops, if you could chain it to like a bottomless or a deep prison, like you got your one for one back and it does delay my values and it can stop a Caius. Like I think that this is a very underrated card. And you mentioned the Gemini deck. Another card that I've been playing this in actually is Lightsworns. Lightsworns, uh, yes. they hate bottomless trap hole. Like, Celestia, Lila, Judgment Dragon. They all hate bottomless trap hole, and you can go so aggressive with this set, and they're like, oh yeah, I got bottomless. You flip this, and they're like, oh no, I'm in like, big danger. You will get get big buckets with this card. So, yeah, I, I'm a fan of this card, uh, if right. you can play it. Yeah, if your deck supports, it, definitely Iron Wall. Now, this is my favorite card on the list to side against Vaya Roll. Hands down, number one favorite card. And it is Royal Decree. Because if you look at a lot of the lists, they're running at least, I'd say, 10 traps. So this is a 1 for 10. <laughs> it's a 1 for 10. So it's, it's, it's really good. And, I mean, it doesn't really have much drawback. The only drawback of Royal Decree is, like, you your deck probably also plays traps as well right so you'll be hindering yourself a little bit too but for my type of deck right because you know once again i'm the diva hero guy i don't mind stopping my traps to stop their traps because i at that point it becomes a monster battle like whose monsters are better are my monsters better or your monsters better right but even if you're not playing diva hero royal decree is definitely a card that you can still consider siding because it stops the bottomlesses it stops the deep prisons it stops the mirror force it stops the torrential it stops the oppression it stops even their dust tornado you know stops their solemn judgment it stops their starlight rule it stops all of those cards and like they need you know <laughs> once again Ryko to out this card or they can make brionic right depending on the situation but the point is like oh. yes or kai right but the point is i mean Vayu Turbo, like I explained before, no matter what you side in, they're going to have a way to out it. If there was a floodgate against Vayu Turbo, like an absolute hands-down floodgate, everybody would have already been siding it. So you can only side the best cards for your deck that complement your deck against the matchup. So anything else you want to say about Royal Decree? Uh, Yeah, Royal Decree can be... Yeah, it's it can be obnoxious. It can uh, delay me and, you know, really put me on the back foot. Like, I've lost to this a few times, but also, you know, it's not the hardest card to out. And like you said... Playing Royal Decree limits your own defensive traps. I'm actually more scared of Imperial Iron Wall because if you're playing Iron Wall, then you also have to worry about other traps. And yep. so, yeah. But Royal Decree, yeah. If you can, if you can support it, like Absolute Zero is monster removal in itself. So it's like a huge, like two for one special, like monster plus spell. Whereas I'm playing Vanillas. So yeah, Royal Decree is good. Yep. So definitely, guys. If you take haven't taken anything from this video, 
you should definitely consider Iron Wall if your deck can support it once again because this card is really good. And that brings us to the final card that you can potentially side in, which is Shadow Imprisoning Mira. So why don't you take the talk for this one first? Shadow Mirror. So this card hits every single card in the deck except for Mr. Raiko Card Trooper. The let's see, it doesn't stop attacks, but it's yeah, it's certainly disruptive. The there was a one hero beat player. He would play another skill uh, skill drain's a card that you can actually add to this. The hero beat player was two, playing two skill drain, three shadow mirror, and I didn't have enough removal to get rid of all of the threats. So it's definitely going to you know hamper the value turtles game plan but don't expect it to stick unless you have you know three copies or you know skill drain on top of it so i think right. it's a good card if you can support it right and like i mean that's what it always comes down to as you can see just the hamster raiko kaius faction that engine of value turbo is what makes it so strong and gives it the ability to out so many different things like it can out pretty much almost all of these traps here right it even outs a lot of these monsters and even outs a lot of these spells. Like it's just such a well-built deck that like you're never you're never gonna have a card that is like perfect for every given moment. But overall, Shadow Mirror, like was mentioned, it stops every card in the deck. Like they can go like Greffer pitch and then you can just go Shadow Mirror and like now they don't get anything. Like of course the card that they pitch gets sent to the grave because it was a cost. If they could go summon Army Knight, you go Shadow Mirror, they don't send anything, right? Like it definitely has a lot of versatility. And um a card to consider if your deck isn't heavenly reliant on dark monsters so that wraps up actually the side deck in portion for this video so now we're gonna get into like what you guys love to see most ten foot and I we're gonna go in a set I'm gonna try my best to show you how to beat by turbo but I might just get too old creamed you know but either way it's gonna be a good time and uh, we're gonna move into the last portion of this video all right, so now here I am against 10 FD. So definitely good luck to him. And we're gonna start off with scissors. We're feeling scissors. All right, terrible choice. Absolutely terrible choice, but that's all right. I'm used to playing down and out. And my opening hand, it wouldn't be a true hero if I didn't draw Malicious and Spine Gilman together. And we'll see how I fare. Now, if he sets a monster, I can potentially play out of this hand because I have mind control. And if it's he's at hamster, then I just auto lose. Like this hand doesn't out hamster at all. But if for whatever reason he opens up really weak and he doesn't have any monster, I can proceed to go to Spine Gum and beat down. I actually will MST the back row because I have MST and heavy. So I can just MST because I don't want this Gilman to get deprisoned. Because if I lose my Gilman, like that's just it. Now a potential good six card here would be Rhoda. Rhoda is the exact card that I need to kind of like fight a fair fight, basically. So if I get Rhoda, that's nice. All right. Um. Okay, that actually changes things. So I'll, now that I drew Prodigy, I'm actually going to go for Special Summon Prodigy and sack it for Malicious because it draws me closer into the deck. So I'm going to do that. Special Prodigy. He has Oppression. Okay, that's fine. I have MST. All right. Um, I'm not worried about Gores because nobody says Gores beyond oppression. I also don't even think his list plays oppression. So that's good. Um, M phase, we draw into a diva, hopefully. Who? Who? I wouldn't be a true hero, right? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm in a really strong spot because like I can potentially kill him next turn, depending on what he does. Um yeah, that was actually the best move to make sure that he doesn't die because I have mind control. Um, so now he's not going to die unless I pull into like Miracle Fusion. I'm definitely going to have you storm because I don't believe he has anything. Uh, if he goes dust shoot on this uh, heavy storm, that would suck. I'm actually going to think here because there's also merit to not heavy storming because I could just beat him down with Gilman uh, for a bit. And if I beat him down with Gilman for a bit, because if I make a level eight, that's really committal and yeah actually i'm just going to summon gilman instead and hopefully he doesn't have anything i want to save my big push for when i know i have a game and yeah more than likely he won't do anything to a gilman which he didn't so next turn if he does absolutely nothing then i'll go for the game shot i'm hoping that he summons a monster here once again i'm not really afraid of his back rows i don't have a read he has starlight road because if he did he would have set them all turn one 
so I'm gonna heavy storm him like I'm not worried about that and I plus I drew in the miracle fusion so like even if I heavy storm and he brings out um stardust then I can like just tribute for Kaya so it's like I'm just generally not worried at all uh yep that's just game I can tell by how he's reacting because if he had starlight road yeah he would have flipped it up okay that's fine uh that's that's a mega game um yeah so we'll just go ahead banish molly for molly summon diva and that's game one uh yeah of course we could sack for kaius but there's no point in doing that when we have game and we know he's not on gore so we'll just make stardust we'll make a level four doesn't matter level five rather android uh yeah we're just gonna style on him we don't have to do all this <laughs> i'm sorry 10fd <laughs> if you're watching this i'm very sorry uh yeah we simply do not care all right so i'm gonna take this and he has Raikou as well so yeah that's like omega game yep 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 all right so now we get into the siding portion so like i said i believe in consecrated so i'm gonna try my best to make 10 fd a believer that way he could be like all right you're right like it's not that bad to side consecrated so we'll see um yeah in this matchup like i side out my traps because obviously i'm putting it in decree uh usually i side this out but i'm actually going to keep this in um and also against this matchup let's see so i mean i've talked about this gold sark how i don't think it's that great and the rest of these cards i kind of want to keep like i could side out deck devi uh and mind control i mean mind control just did the most out out see my deck plays tuners right so my deck plays tuners so it's not like the worst and i can also mind control and take one of his raiko um so let's see i probably will wind up signing out mind control and let me just look at my five again. Uh, yeah, I can also side out Deck Devi. All right, I'm going to side out Deck Devi, and I'm going to keep Mind Control. Even though I, I love Deck Devi, but it's a little bit more inconsistent. It's also a trap, so... If I go first, I'll keep it in. But going second, I'd rather have Nobleman. All right, here we, is. Here we are. I drew the Consecrated. So we're about to see like how good or bad this card is against Vayu Turbo. If I can make him and everyone watching a believer... Uh, but the good thing is, my hand's quite good, right? Because I have Diva and I have Heavy, so it's like I don't have to worry about his back rows. Um, but I don't have much of a push. That's the problem, right? So here I need Nobleman. All right, we didn't get it. So that's quite unfortunate. So we don't really have much of a play here, so we just kind of have to pass. It's unfortunate. Uh, the reason why I don't want to go summon Diva is because Diva is such a powerful card, and like I don't want to risk it running into a Hamster or a Raikou. And then I don't have a follow-up. And if he has... Okay, yeah. So that middle one's a Raikou. Because if it was Hamster, he would have flipped it up. And, like, this works out perfectly. Because now I could just go end phase, drop Malicious. And it forces him to play the game. And, like, next turn I can, like, Heavy Storm. And, like, I can make uh, some Synchros. And I have Miracle Fusion. So, like, I'm in a good position as long as he doesn't summon, like, False Dinah. Like, False Dinah, like, that card puts me in a really bad spot. So hopefully I don't curse myself. Um... But if he's just doing like just this set pass, set pass, he's going to be in for a rude awakening. And even if like he goes a little bit offensive, I have Gores, right? So I'm not worried about him going like summon Greffer, pitch. Okay, yeah, like none of this is worried. It's a shame that I took Red Dragon, Arch Red Dragon Archfiend out of my deck. Oh, actually, that just changes things. I can actually just go for a Black Rose play now instead, which um might not be too terrible. Yeah, so we're going to heavy even though it's just one back row. All right, yeah, so that back row didn't do anything, but we didn't really want to risk a Royal Oppression, so we're just going to Black Rose. Uh, yeah. We will Black Rose. And then afterwards, we're going to make uh, zero. All right, so let's Black Rose. Ooh, that was a good Black Rose. That was a good Black Rose. All right, so anyway, 
now we break our, our zero so yeah sometimes being pro just doesn't get there sometimes being pro doesn't get there all right so we're gonna swing for 25 all right and here we're gonna set return because if this return resolves we win uh and also it guards against brain control so there's no reason not to set the return i mean we have gores which you know you can argue is conflicting but i don't think he has anything like a dark arm would suck he has two darks though but he can easily get a third one like summon armageddonite pitch a third dark like soroko drop dark arm and like if he does all that like i that sucks like, there's nothing else to say like that sucks but yeah, we'll see. I think he has more back rows than he's letting off. I think he was playing conservatively. So I think in his hand, he still has like a good amount of spells and traps. Like, I don't think he like bricked and pulled like a all monster hand. And like, even he admit he was trying to do a pro gamer move. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things work out. It's like, if I still had red dragon in my extra deck, that would have been such spice, such spice. But I took it out because, like, generally, you don't really get a chance to um, set your monsters like you want to. Your opponent, rather. So, I'm thinking, once again, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is Brain Control Dark Arm. But, I mean, if he doesn't have that, I have, like, a lot of different plays I could do next turn. My main thing is, like... The, name, the main thing that I want to happen is, one, me not to die, of course, because then the game's over. And two, I don't want him to hit my back row. Because I have return set, and even though I only have D.Va and Prodigy Banish, I have Malicious Engrave. So I can easily easily go, like, Banish Molly for Molly, and then, like, return, and then bring back, like, uh, the Molly that I banished and D.Va. So that's, like, really, really good, because I can make a level 8. And then if I pull into another tuner, that's also good. So here, this is fine. Like I said, what I'm afraid of is him going sending Sirocco or, or even Plague and then dropping Dark Arm. So Dark Arm's the card that I'm afraid of most because I don't have a clean out to Dark Arm at all, unfortunately. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I mean, my out to Dark Arm is zero, right? Because if he drops Dark Arm, he'll pop my return and like that won't have any value. And then he'll go pop zero and then like now Dark Arm's gone. Like, he's fine. So he's asking resolution, so that makes me... Oh. Interesting. All right, well, that's just game, then. That should just be game. Uh, especially because I'm not worried about anything. Cause, uh, yeah, that should just be game. Okay, wow. All right. Um, let me just calculate it. So we go return. We make dark end. Now, we can't make dark end because we want to summon consecrated light. So we go return, and we make stardust uh so we'll have zero all right yeah uh it would have been so much easier if i had another diva but i don't so banish molly from molly yeah and i also got to make sure i have enough board space too all right, either way, I still think it's best to just play and kind of like play as I go because I want to do this play regardless because I th I want to show him that Consecrated Light is good. Uh, do we banish Molly first? No, it's not going to matter. It's not going to be able to attack because I have Consecrated. So it doesn't matter if we banish Molly first and it's just like another card. So I could just go return now and then, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. All right. So we return now. do that all right we banish molly for molly so it's not game unfortunately but we're in a good spot we're in a damn good spot uh-huh we make stardust it's very very interesting and then, like, good luck getting past Consecrated Decree. Yeah. Yep. A 
11 there. I mean, he would need brain control. Gain 300. Uh, all right, M phase. Okay, so he needs brain control. If he doesn't have brain control, he's in a quite an awkward situation. If he does have brain control, then like, he doesn't even win with brain control, but it puts me in a bad spot because he just goes brain control, like attack, consecrate, I'll take 25. Or he could go like brain control, attack, and like crash. So it puts me in a really awkward situation. Like, I can't think of another card it could be other than brain control. Because he can't summon any monsters. Like, yeah, okay, car trooper, that's fine. But like now, if he takes out my consecrated, I mean, even if he gets Plague, what, what is he going to do? Okay, he mill brain control. That's game. Yeah, so I take 19, and that should just be game. Because I could just beat over that for game. All right. Should be GG. But I'll wait. Like, I'll let him set some back rows, and then, like, end phase, I'll just flip the Kree, and, like, that'll just be that. He can't MST or negate it because I have, like, Stardust. Like, all this is fine. It doesn't really do anything. It's just like, it doesn't do anything. All right, battle phase, and then attack, GG. All right, so that is how you beat Bayou Turbo. He was over here saying consecrated his ass. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we could play one more. We can play one more, but not on um for this video. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. But let's get on call real quick. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.